All right, welcome back for another Silsa member spotlight. Today we have Chad Larson, co-owner of Mellow Cream International, and we are in the Oopbox Studios. Chad, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me, Andrew. So, how how did you hear about Silsa, and what made you decide to join? Uh, well, I'd never heard of anything like this before. Uh, Silsa was new to me. I was having lunch with one of their members, and they said, "There's an organization here in town that we really think you'd enjoy." And it kind of came about through uh, asking about a keynote speaker. They said, do you know a good keynote speaker that, that would tell a good story and maybe be relevant to this? And he told me a little bit about the group. And that's when I introduced uh, Stephanie Stuckey to them. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was my first, actually, Silsa meeting that I went to. It was, was a good first one. When Stephanie, <laughs> yeah, when Stephanie was there. So. Yeah, she was great. Um, interesting story. Great story. Yeah, that was very cool. I heard it twice. So how did, you had seen her already? Uh, yeah, I met her at a conference in uh, California, down okay. in San Diego, yeah, nice. a, year, a year before. That was a good suggestion. <laughs> yeah, it was neat that it was uh, that it was actually done in a old Stuckey's building, which added to the story. I think it really resonated. And yeah, I didn't was, even know that. I didn't either until was, that whole thing came about. I didn't yeah, realize that was, was super was. cool. I twist. always thought it was an old Pizza Hut for some reason. Didn't, I didn't know what it didn't was. Pizza Huts used to. Be <laughs> they were like kind of shaped like that as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was in my mind forever that it was an old yeah. Pizza Hut. And then, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, how do you and your company define? customer service and what kind of principles do you put around you know providing quality customer service well and i think that's why salsa is such an interesting um group for us because one of the things in the bakery industry it's a relatively saturated area around donuts in the in the big picture and um we're not the low cost producer we build a better quality product and when you talk about donuts it's almost a category of uh, commodity where it's price driven and they're so sensitive to that so how when you're not the lowest cost producer do you keep your foot in the door or get your foot in the door and a big part of that is the customer service side of it so we go all the way from the beginning of the relationship and how we help them train their people to use our products and make sure that they're putting the best product out there we call that kind of our category management hmm. so we're actually in the field with the sales team out there showing and different uh, brokers that we use showing the customers how to use our product best and display it and get the most value out of it then we also all the way to the point of distribution and in movement of the product we have our own three trucks that move product about 50 to 60 percent of the volume of our product goes out through our own trucks oh wow so yeah. so we take it beyond just the standard accepting a phone call or an email and helping people through through their challenges we take it all the way to the point of how do we partner with them at their store level how do we get the product to them that is carrying our brand you know in a way that shows that we really are part of that process um, take it all the way through oh that, that's i mean trying to keep control of the pipeline <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's it's awesome. a food product and it's frozen so you, you know there's a lot of sensitivity to that yeah no i could understand that that's there's a lot of things that could go wrong there, so uh, keeping you know if I'm on the pulse of all those things seems like it probably is very important for sure. Um, you know, in the food industry, uh, there's probably things that can come up a lot. It's probably, possibly, I, I don't know, but I would think almost there's, it's almost easier for client uh, clients or customers to get more frustrated or something like more often maybe. Um, can you tell me about a time maybe when there was an issue and how you guys went above and beyond to, to, to <coughs> make that right? Well, I mean, I think is is we bought the company in 2019. And as you have a plan to help service the customers and smooth transition to get us as new ownership into that role as far as the customer's view and how we do things, all of a sudden the wheels fall off because there's no product available because oh. the government shuts things down. <laughs> so... Um, a lot you of know, frustration probably. Yeah, so there was the oodles. I mean, you, you couldn't, it was bucket fulls coming at you every minute. So you're, you're, they're frustrated because the government has them shut down. And our, our sales channel is through the, the self-serve mostly, through the self-serve grocery store uh, channels. So for us, when they shut that down because they didn't understand how to control COVID, customers were asking for different things. How do we put donuts in front of them in a different way, packaged and whatever? And we aren't built for that. That's not our form. Our form is bulk pack, ready to finish at the store level. Well, they didn't have the bodies. So it was a huge shift for us to try to help accommodate what we could. And we 
revamped some of the things we're doing at the plant level and we're not a small operation we make two two to two and a half million donuts a week yeah and you probably so have a i mean it's very, very regimented process lines. yeah yes. yeah it's not, yeah, it's not like free flow yeah. like in a shop where they have you know a small fryer and they're doing this so we have huge pieces of equipment running you know 300 donuts a minute not easy so to reorganize. yeah so you have to kind of you don't really reorganize that but how do you do ad hoc processes added on to a linear process more cellular type processing to help you accommodate that so you know, it, it's sometimes the the changes made aren't just on the surface level. They're fundamental changes to how you do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a good example of how we did it. And we survived. And as I jokingly tell people, I said, you know, we made it through COVID, only owning the company for three months, and the checks kept cashing, and the lights stayed on. So I think that's a, a testimonial to our, our ability to adapt, not just in the manufacturing side, but also in, in the customer service level to make sure that we were we didn't lose any customers through that process. Yeah. And so. everybody had to, if you didn't adapt, I mean, a lot of the businesses that didn't adapt or figure out a way to are the ones that they went out of business. It. They didn't make um, it. So that, no, that's in your industry, I could see, or well, with you guys specifically with like a, a big operation like that, that's, that's interesting to hear that, mm -hmm. that, that even tougher to adapt in that situation. So, well, a new ownership. So you kind of think, you know, what you know, but you're still feeling yeah, you your got way it through right it. before. Jeez. Yeah. That's a jumped right into a tough time. <laughs> Well, it's awesome to hear that you guys uh, were able to step up and have that open-minded to that mindset of uh, pivoting when you needed to and made it. You don't have a choice. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, do or sure. die, right? Well, this uh, next question maybe was just answered a little bit, but uh, like, uh, what is like one of the biggest challenges your business has faced and have you overcome it? But that sounds like maybe it was just answered. That was, you know, that was the first wave right that that lack of ability because materials weren't coming in the way they're supposed to so the supply chain of our business including all the way to our customers was deeply impacted we got past that started to slowly move on beyond that but then the next phase was escalation of material costs uh, beyond anything uh, that in the industry i've been doing this 25 rapid. years i've never seen like it. you can't move price increases to your customers fast enough so you're losing money every case you're sending out. So how do you get in front of that? Well, that's a tough conversation. And that's where you lean on those relationships and the customer service side of it that you have with them and the trust factor you gain through being that category manager and them trusting and believing that you're doing the right thing for them and the industry because you're not just out there trying to you know, fatten your pockets with money because you're charging them so much more. The commodities truly shifted. They, yeah. they were, it was an extraordinarily, um, impactful time for the United States and we're still feeling it we haven't worked our way out of that food prices are astronomical from yeah. where they were there's been all those trending videos of people showing groceries and they're yeah. like this is what $200 got me that's like not much stuff you almost walk out with $200 in your two bags in your hands yeah no it's crazy it's insane yeah that's a challenging thing um, you know I, I never thought about that I mean we obviously had some stuff increase but since we're more uh software based you know what i mean some of that stuff didn't hit the effect you know the effect it didn't feel as much on there yeah um it, yeah, it affected food, your team members though and your customers yeah and that's so there's cost sure. costs to them that are you know escalating that's always that's always difficult balance yeah yeah challenging time man challenging time but we survived didn't we yeah <laughs> <laughs> luckily so man got through it um well what uh what's a good way for customers to find you or maybe find products like what's the what's the best route there so our brands are generally not advertised at the stores grocery stores want you to think they're making them fresh every day for their wonderful customers so uh if you are locally pro providing them fresh absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely i would say the you know, if you want to see our products, one, we do have branded products that are ready to eat. So they're in the packages with a, a label and a, you know, a clamshell, a clear clamshell. Those are generally uh, under the Kelly's Creations, K, K, E, you know, and, or K, Kelly with a K and Creations with a K. So it's K, K. Okay. Um, so if you look for that, uh, that's our product. And there's a lot of different varieties that we make of that. Um, and then also you go to grocery stores like Schnucks. Not all their donuts are ours, but the cake donuts are what we produce. Awesome. Uh, you go to Hy-Vee, all the yeast raised donuts. So the non-cake donuts are Long John's and Fritters and all that stuff is ours. So, um, And then you can always go to go ahead West Sub Shop and get some wonderful get some bread. bread on those sandwiches. Pour a little chocolate on it. Get yeah. a little Long John. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, anything else our viewers should know offhand that would like to put out there, let them know? Um, no, I think that uh, we appreciate the, the local aspect of our business. As I was telling you before we got started, the company's over 90 years old now. Um, we bought the company and the intent of the ownership before was that we keep it local and that's our commitment because a big company would get rid of the, the local stores. It just doesn't make a lot of sense from a big business standpoint. Um, but we're committed to that because we think it's an iconic brand in Springfield. We hear a lot of wonderful stories of people from a lot of years ago that have been eating the donuts. Yeah. Uh, or I had a friend in North Carolina send me a picture of people walking through the uh, airport with a box of mellow cream donuts all the way down in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. So, I mean, awesome. it, it transcends Springfield because people move out of here and they still look back at their, their familiarities of what they had in their childhood or their home life when they were younger. Um, so we appreciate that. And I think that um, that's one of the coolest things we do is we pr bring smiles um, to people that eat donuts. And donuts are a shared item, so you take them a lot of times to family events or church or places mm -hmm. in the community. Um, and that's that's a cool thing that we do as well. So uh, cherish that and share donuts with everybody. I think that's the important thing. And Silsa, definitely I want to thank Silsa for what they do. I'm, I've only been to three meetings. Uh, it's, it's the coolest thing that I think locally that I've found as far as networking and also just the, the relevance of the speakers that they get and the topics they talk yeah. to. Um, it, it's value added. So if anybody's on the fence of whether or not to join Silsa, I think they would be uh, missing out on a great opportunity if they didn't. Yeah, well, we uh, we definitely appreciate that. We appreciate the support and definitely staying local. It's You know, it's crazy. I've talked um, about it before on our podcast, but like how many businesses are in Springfield and around Springfield that are huge businesses doing national work. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. That people don't even think about. Um, so that's really cool. A lot of that stuff goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. So <clears throat> definitely appreciate keeping it local and uh, all the delicious donuts you guys make. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't bring you something. No, nah, man. We'll figure you this time. <laughs> it's a Monday morning uh, yeah. and uh, early. So. <laughs> all right. Last question. What's your favorite donut? Oh, yeah. It's easy. I like the uh, chocolate iced with the white mellow cream filling. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I it's like the gla glazed old fashioned. Oh, yes. I didn't yeah. even. I, I started. The first time I even thought about getting an old-fashioned was like, I, I don't know, a year ago or two years ago. And I've been eating mellow cream donuts my whole life. Um, and they're, I think I like them because they're like the uh, holes, mm -hmm. the little donut holes. Yeah. Those like spiced ones are kind of the yeah. same, but yeah, I always loved those as a kid. We used to, Saturday mornings, I was on a bowling league, and every morning we would stop. There was a mellow cream right outside of Lake Town, right? There might have been. Day, I, I think I, so. Yeah, I that was before that you owned. But yeah, I think there was a mellow cream right there, and we would get donuts right before going bowling every Saturday morning. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So it was always, cool. I, you know, this, I was always excited about that. I get a lot of those stories, and I, I love that when people talk about the product. It's such an engaging event because every time you talk to somebody, and you may not know them from anyone. But you walk up and you know you talk about the donuts and they, they're always willing to share what donuts are favorite they're always willing to and it's always with a smile yeah i've never had anybody tell me that without a smile so um that's a beautiful thing you don't get to do that every day in your job yeah. go in and create smiles like that my wife takes our kids every friday morning awesome. she has fridays off so she that's their thing they go get donuts uh, i think on the north grand location yeah. and uh grab some donuts and uh have that little bit of time together and then she takes them to uh daycare and or school or whatever you know, i guess it was a day to mom yeah that's awesome. <laughs> it gives that's her some time awesome. to, to do some work around the house so well chad thanks again for yeah, joining us for and uh me. supporting silsa and uh everything you do i appreciate the time thanks everybody thank you